Hello everybody! So it's time for my favorite type of video ever. An unhaul! I'm not someone who can keep a book on my shelf for a really long time if I know I'll never read it again. Like as soon as I'm done with it, it has to go. It has to go. Bye. Release into the wild. New owner. And I think I have seven books. I have them in a little pile right here. I'm not looking at them because I want my reactions to be fresh. Like, oh, this is why I want to get rid of it. So at this time, the first book I'm going to show you, I haven't filmed a review for, but I'm going to. And the first darling I will unhaul is Priory of the Orange Tree. I'm very tempted to just slide this off because I love the cover and I think I just might give the book away. I paid $32 for this. I might keep this cover. So like even long before I began, I began reading this, I would like see this book on bookstore counters, this beautiful cover. I'd be like, ooh, it has a dragon. It's gold. The dragon looks angry. I want it. But against $32, that's an investment. If I don't like it, like what happened. Oh, sad face. But then I gave in to my impulsive tendencies and bought the thing. So Priory of the Orange Tree it is a tale of many countries. The countries whose names I forgot, but let's just call them the East, the West, and the South. Those are the most important ones. The West hates dragons. The East worships dragons. The South hunts dragons. This book is told in four different perspectives. Let's see, Ied, Tane, Loth, and some old guy I didn't like. Nicholas. I called him Nicholas, but it's spelled N-I-C-L-A. Y.S. So I guess it's Nicklays. And aside from the ending, in my opinion, being pretty anticlimactic, I didn't like, so it's told in four different perspectives, like I said, I didn't like two of those perspectives. So on the other two, live long and prosper, on the other two, that's the only parts I enjoyed, and I was just wallowing around in the other two perspectives. The writing style was very pretty in the book, nothing wrong with that. Pretty good world building, but if I'm not invested in the characters, I'm not enjoying it. Tane was my greatest disappointment because she's a dragon rider, and I expect a lot from people who ride on dragons and the dragons they ride. I need to be thrilled, and just whenever we were in her perspective, everything was rushed. She was that character who's like good at everything without really trying. The ending was bad, I already said that, and I'll never reread this. Ever. Whew. Okay, next is. You guys know how I feel about this. Good cover. Watermelon. Fine. If you guys haven't seen my review for it, my like 29 minute review for it, I'll link it below in the description. But to summarize, the worst dialogue I've ever seen in the book. Ever. You got kids who are like 20 years old and they talk like they're 15. Everyone's as bland as tofu. The twist, which doesn't make generic not generic, genre sense for its jo genre, genre -nic sense. No, that's not a word. I don't know what's going on on this page. This book actually made me feel kind of bad about myself too. Like it's about a girl wanting to do college over again. She wants a fresh new start. So she goes abroad to England to study um, a writing course, even though her parents are, like pushing her to become a doctor. And like, even though you think and you know the message it's supposed to be I don't even know what the message is I'm sorry I gotta think I think contrary to what the author wanted it made people like me who like aren't that popular IRL don't have a lot of friends around has never had any romantic involvement feel like poop I get that that if you're some a very introvert introverted introverted individual like myself you do have to like step out of your co comfort zone and change but everybody was just picking on the girl Shane like oh there's something wrong with you and thanks I feel that over here on the other side of the pages also pilot sucks the only good character in this is Amy because she was hardly in it Aww. I'm sad I didn't like this book our dark duet it's the sequel to this savage song by B.E. Schwab Victoria Schwab I loved the first book. I love the two main characters, August and Kate, but in this book. Woo! What made August so likable in the first book is completely gone via the plot. There's this awesome new monster running around that we get no exposition towards. Like, I would have liked the info dump of this. No, but instead he just dumped a monster right on top of me with no information. I know if I reread this book, I wouldn't reread the book. I'd just like look at a certain character's point of view because he was fine. He was a villain for the sake of being a villain, and I like that. I'm easy to please with villains most of the times, and he was a smart villain. He did some good scheming. There was a new soon I introduced. Didn't like sorrow one bit. Sorrow? Who cares? Like we went from a pretty small cast of characters in the first book to just <sighs> so many, and it's just ugh. it bloated the story and I remember something stupid happened right before something tragic happened so could I feel bad about the tragedy? No, because I'm still like why would you do that in the first place you idiot? But it's blue. I like the color blue. I forgot about you. The sun is also a star. Did not like. B. 
The only parts I actually did like were in the little tiny chapters when we're outside our two main characters' perspectives. I didn't like Natasha. I liked Daniel okay enough, but mostly because his brother was a jerk and picking on him and I needed some kind of tension that wasn't like romantically induced. This was like a 24 hour romance. Who does that in 24 hours? Who? Ashley is 12 hours. You didn't know the plot, it's about Natasha, her family being deported, so she only has 12 hours to stay in New York, I think it is. Daniel's on his way for an interview for, um, maybe a doctorship, if that's a word he doesn't even want to be a part of, just like again, but better. And Natasha's like, oh, I hate everything. <sighs> love isn't real. You can't prove love. It's not scientific. <sighs> She wasn't likable, one bit. And I'm like, Daniel, what do you see in her? I like the little designs above each chapter. I really like the cover, but no. Daniel goes around saying, oh, this isn't love at first sight. This is more like love at second sight. I don't care. Stop it. Okay, book number five is Reckless by Cornelia Funke. I bought this book specifically not to do anything about it. I just wanted something sweet and bo not boring plain. Just some, it's a kid's book. That's all I wanted. It has cool little pencil drawings in it. But oh my gosh, I was so confused. Like this book is like a dark take on the really classic fantasies like Sleeping Beauty, Snow White, but everything's just like twisted. And I love that. That's the only thing I like in this book. This book is about one brother, I think, what's his name? Jacob. His name's Jacob Reckless. Pet peeve. Someone's last name or the first name being one of their personal characteristics. He's on this quest to save his brother, who he hates, cannot stand. So why waste your time? Just let him, leave him to his fate. And it just drops you into this world with no introduction. Like, I thought I had ac accidentally picked up a book midway through a whole series. Third or fourth book. And nothing is explained. There's this whole year period where Jacob is trapped in the land of the fairies of being seduced. And you think he tells us about all those juicy bits? No. I want to know what you were doing with those fairies. Book number six is something I didn't finish. I DNF'd it. The Beast is an Animal. I like this cover. It's just, it's a lonely stump growing in the woods. Can I remember what this book was even about? Okay. It's about this girl, Alice. She's a little kid. She's living in this village. All of a sudden, these two Soul Eater sisters swoop down out of the forest, kill all the adults, and now all the kids are just left. The kids are transported from that village to a highly religious village, and they are given the horrible, horrible jobs of just like guarding the gates. Say bye to all your precious childhood memories. You're just going to be stuck looking at a gate for like all your days until you die. And your descendants too. So we have Alice, who, for about this much, is still seven years old. If you don't like child protagonists, I don't think you'll like this. And I'm not picky about that. I read The Room, which is told entirely by a five-year-old, and I loved it. But the thing about Alice is that she's a loner, so she doesn't talk, which is fine, but she also like doesn't think. You're just watching her do her stuff. She doesn't internalize everything anything so she doesn't have a personality and she's basically just walking down the forest and guarding the walls most of the time throughout the book or at least the part i was reading so yeah i was bored there was one scene i like where the beast like visited her and i'm like oh he's so cute he seemed almost childlike i'm like he's cute but then because i was seriously considering dnfing i flipped through and saw that the beast would only like pop up two more times I'm like oh there's nothing really keeping me here, so I bounced. This next one's gonna be very salty because I expected to love this book and it hurt me the most that it didn't. Finding Audrey. So I relate to Audrey quite a bit because I feel more confident and secure when I do have sunglasses on. Like you can't see my, you can't see most of my face, you can't tell where I'm looking. It's just easier to get in the confrontation when someone's, when someone can't see into your eyes. That's how I feel. I'm always like much calmer in my public spaces when I have eyeglasses on, sunglasses. So I'm like, maybe this will help me. It didn't because I don't have a boyfriend. And apparently a boyfriend is all you need to cure anxiety. And I'm all for getting a boyfriend, very much for a boyfriend. But they had no chemistry. Linus, I hate Linus. He just pops up and all he does is smile. He had no personality, he just smiled. Audrey was fine, but like she struggled, but she didn't struggle enough. I didn't think it was believable because she had Linus. You know, just some good kissing, some hugging, and oh, anxiety, away, away, shoo. Oh, that reminds me, the thing I really hated about this book, yes, I said hate, I know it's a strong word, but it's a good word, is that an event caused Audrey's anxiety, but are we ever told what it is? No, it's hinted at something involved with like bullying, but we are told that it was like 
beyond bullying that involved like three other girls. But what is it? Who knows? Next cover though is Blue. And there were actually parts in, in this book that made me laugh. Like I gave it a three. I actually read it twice. So I bumped the star rating up to a three because it was funny. And there are parts of this book that are told in like movie script and I really like that. But everything else made me mad. And it ended in like a very, very close fourth wall break and I don't like that. Don't you dare have a character turn to the side and wink up towards the heavens. So that is it for my unhaul. If you want a very, very brief summary of what just happened. Made me angry. Made me bored. Made me confused. Made me hate many people. It's actually kind of relatable now because Kate works at a coffee shop and I feel her emotions because I work at a coffee shop now. So I'm like, I get why you do that coffee. I get it. People make you do that. But yeah, made me mad because the characters weren't like, they lost their awesomeness. And just disappointing and anticlimactic. Oh, there's also something called the nameless one, which if you think about it, is an oxymoron. You can't be the nameless one because you technically have a name now. So I'm keeping this cover though. It's mine. Thank you everybody for watching my unhaul. If you didn't like these books, tell me why in the comments. If you did, tell me why I'm super wrong and should be pushed into a pit full of venomous porcupines. I will accept it. Thank you everybody, I am Casey and you are insanely beautiful today. That eyeshadow, girl, dang. College starts tomorrow. Sin prayers.